Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Time travel might be a cool concept that's been a huge part of classic movies, such as Back to the Future. However, could it actually be a real thing? A story about a mysterious Pan Am plane may have answered that question. The mystery of Pan Am Flight 914 has driven historians and skeptics crazy over the last few years. This begs the question, how did a plane possibly land 37 years after originally taking off? I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode… It all started one night in June 2018. The screams coming from underneath the house. It was so intense the homeowners simply abandoned the property. I'll even share audio of the screams so you can decide for yourself if it's real. Weirdo family member Ellis Helmerson shares a story passed down through the generations about a true ghost sighting in her family. But first, have investigators finally solved the strange disappearance of Pan Am's Flight 914? We begin with that story. If you're new here, welcome to the show. And while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to connect with me on social media, and more. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. The incredible story began all the way back on July 2, 1955, when Pan Am Flight 914 was scheduled to take off from its airport in New York. The plane was believed to be transporting 57 passengers and four crew members to Miami. It seemed like it would be a normal flight for everyone involved. However, this would prove to be far from the truth. It turns out that something mysterious happened that would set this bizarre story into motion. After it took off from New York, it wouldn't take long before air traffic controllers lost the signal of Pan Am Flight 914. Just like that, it had completely disappeared from the radar, and no one understood what had happened. Not only was there no indication that the plane had crashed somewhere remote, but there was also no sign of bodies of any of the passengers or crew members that were aboard. There were no leads whatsoever for 37 years. After an intense investigation, the authorities concluded that the plane must have crashed and that all of its passengers and crew must have died. They were unable to locate the plane and came to a conclusion that it must have crashed in the sea somewhere seeing that no plane had been found on land. As a result, the airline compensated all of the families of everyone involved with death benefits. However, those families were in store for some shocking news 37 years later. Fast forward to 1992, where something absolutely remarkable happened. It was September 9th, and the setting for our incredible scene was an airport in the capital of Venezuela, Caracas. It seemed like a normal day at work for all the air traffic controllers, however something would soon come to pass that would completely take them by surprise. 
a DC-4 Douglas aircraft appeared out of nowhere and had not even been picked up by the airport's radar. What did this mean? One of the key figures who played a huge part in this Pan Am mystery was an air traffic controller by the name of Juan de la Corte. With the rest of his team, Juan turned up to work that day not expecting anything out of the ordinary. However, he ended up being completely wrong. With this mysterious DC-4 Douglas plane in his sights, he had no idea how it managed to evade the radar or what it would do next. It wouldn't take long before Juan de la Corte got a contact signal from the Pan Am plane in question. Amazingly, it was the pilot who had somehow managed to appear without being traced on their radar. Where are we? the pilot asked. He then confirmed something that completely took the air control by surprise. He continued, We are Pan American Airways Flight 914 from New York to Miami with a crew of four and 57 passengers, he said. So what did Juan do? His initial report was followed up by a strange detail, that the Pan Am Flight 914 had gone in the wrong direction by approximately 1,800 kilometers. Confused by this statistic, Juan was quick to ask the pilot some important questions. These included if they had experienced some sort of crash and if they had failed to make contact with anyone else. And although he cleared the plane for landing, it was what Juan heard next that truly took this story to the next level. Everything seemed to be going to plan as the plane touched down and brought itself to a stop. However, Juan then heard the pilot say something that completely baffled him. We were scheduled to land in Miami at 9.55 a.m. on the 2nd of July, 1955, the pilot said nonchalantly. Juan was quick to confirm to the pilot that he had actually landed in Caracas and that it was, in fact, May 21, 1992. Also, Juan was bewildered when he first laid eyes on the plane. When Juan first laid eyes on the mysterious Pan Am Flight 914 plane, he was shocked at how outdated it looked. He specifically used the term rugged to describe the aircraft. Unlike other planes that looked pristine and modern, this plane looked like it had come from another universe. However, he tried to overlook its unorthodox appearance and continued to communicate with its pilot. It was at this point that the pilot did something that Juan never saw coming. Juan was simply telling the pilot what day it was, However, as soon as he heard this, the pilot erupted into a fit of panic and yelled, Oh my God, on the radio. The air control team could also hear the many passengers screaming and panicking in the background. As a result, Juan ordered a group of security guards to go down to the front and escort the people out of the Pan Am plane. But then Juan was in for another big surprise. The air control team had no worries that the security team would be able to calm the crew and passengers of Pan Am Flight 914 and bring them into the airport. However, as soon as they approached the plane, the pilot instructed them not to get any closer. Then Juan heard on the radio the pilot screaming and saying, No, do not get near, we are leaving now. Sure enough, the plane took off once again and disappeared. But to where? Or when? According to Juan, the plane once again was untraceable on the radar after flying back into the clouds. In light of this, the airport sent three jets out to try and track down Pan Am Flight 914. Nevertheless, they were unable to locate its whereabouts. Despite this, it certainly wasn't the end of the story. Another report claims to have identified the plane and its passengers' whereabouts just hours after the Caracas fiasco. It had reportedly arrived in Miami. Reportedly, just a few hours after abruptly departing Caracas, the Pan Am plane landed at the airport that it had supposedly wanted to fly to all those years ago, Miami Airport. Naturally, the staff in Miami were just as perplexed about the plane's arrival as Juan de la Corta was. Upon its arrival, the staff checked the back office, and sure enough, they learned that the very same plane had previously taken off in New York on July 2nd, 1955. 
It made sense that the staff at Miami Airport had plenty of questions for this mysterious plane. It would be a few hours of interrogation before the airport decided what it wanted to do with them. Ultimately, though, they let the passengers and crew go so that they could return home and reunite with their families. However, there was something even creepier at play here that would end up taking this story to a whole new level. Amazingly, the family's biggest surprise wasn't the fact that they were able to finally reunite with long-lost relatives who they believed had died 37 years ago. What surprised them even more was how those passengers looked. Apparently, all of the passengers and crew looked exactly the same age as they did when they first took off back in 1955. While their families were 37 years older, they hadn't aged at all. Also, it was a mystery as to how the plane could still run after so many years. It seems that the more people learned about this bizarre story, the more questions they had. Up until this day, there seems to be zero concrete answers to a number of hard-pressing questions. Firstly, where was the plane during those 37 years? Secondly, if the following is actually true, how did the passengers not age at all? One popular YouTube expert in the supernatural and strange phenomena has recently attempted to try and answer these questions, and many more. One YouTube channel that seeks to find the truth about supernatural phenomena is Alien Investigations. On this channel, the host dedicated an episode to the mystery of Pan Am Flight 914 and gave a detailed account of all the information he had collected over the years about the incident. Although he came to the conclusion that he didn't believe in the story, he did find some fascinating details from a variety of sources that neither proved nor denied its validity. One of the theories presented was that the Bermuda Triangle had something to do with the plane's mysterious disappearance. Over the last 70 years, a number of planes have been the subjects of incidents attributed to the Bermuda Triangle. A notorious body of water in the Atlantic Ocean, the Bermuda Triangle has reportedly claimed numerous planes over the years, with the most recent cases happening in 2017. However, investigators have played down the Bermuda Triangle having played a part in Pan Am Flight's 914's disappearance. Despite the mystery of Pan Am 914 being nothing short of amazing, there is one fascinating detail that might actually prove the event. Could this potentially be evidence of Pan Am Flight 914's ability to time travel? It seems that something happened in that defining moment when Juan was just about to calm the passengers and the pilot decided to fly away again. In the heat of the moment, the pilot reportedly dropped something which fell out of the plane's entrance. It was a classic Birch pocket calendar, which was specifically from the year 1955, the exact same year the plane originally took off. The Pan Am mystery is just one of many others that have captured the imaginations and perplexed millions of historians. Every story is as mysterious as the next, and the one thing that many of these cases have in common is that they still don't have a definitive conclusion to this day. Whether it's the classic story of the disappearance of Amelia Earhart or the Egypt Air Flight 990 of 1999, every story seems to be laden with the sense of mystery. Arguably the most famous aviation mystery in the history of mankind, historians until this day are still trying to locate the whereabouts of Amelia Earhart and her plane. Of course, Earhart is renowned for having been the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. However, when she attempted to fly around the globe in 1937, it seemed that the ambitious pilot simply disappeared over the Pacific Ocean, never to be heard from again. Or was she? In recent times, a photo was unearthed that suggested that Amelia Earhart had in fact successfully flown around the world, only to be captured by Japanese forces during her time in the Pacific. According to the documentary Amelia Earhart, The Lost Evidence, the photo pretty much proves that Earhart and Fred Noonan fell into the hands of the Japanese military. They were accused of being spies. However, the photo has since been debunked as it was taken before Earhart's disappearance. 
Another aviation mystery came in 1971 when a man by the supposed name of Dan Cooper ended up stealing a Boeing 727 before jumping out of the plane with $200,000. It was the last time anyone saw the mysterious man. Despite the fact that his identity was shady and his real name has never been proven, the FBI is convinced that the criminal would never have survived despite the fact that he had a parachute, and the case gave birth to Cooper Veins. While many aviation mysteries have remained unsolved, others have been. This includes the Air Force Flight 571 that carried many Uruguayan passengers across the Andes on October 13, 1972. The plane, which carried five crew members and 40 passengers, went completely off the radar. After 72 days of searching, investigators found 16 survivors. These passengers had no choice but to eat the passengers who had already died in order to survive. The bizarre story was eventually adapted into a 1993 film called Alive. The most mysterious aviation cases seem to be when an entire plane full of passengers can never be found. Take the Flying Tiger Line Flight 739, for example, which disappeared on March 16, 1962. It was carrying 93 American soldiers and in the blink of an eye disappeared off the radar on the way to the Philippines' Clark Air Base. 200,000 square miles were covered in just eight days in order to try and find the passengers, but they were never found. Another aviation mystery that took a few years to solve was the Air France Flight 447, which was scheduled to leave Rio de Janeiro on June 1, 2009. Despite carrying 228 people, the plane went off the radar during the early hours of the morning. The airline was perplexed because there was no distress signal and this model had never crashed before. Eventually, investigators found out that the pilot had only slept for an hour the night before after a romantic evening with his girlfriend. A recent story about a missing plane happened in January 2019 when soccer player Emiliano Sala mysteriously went missing while flying from Nantes, France to Cardiff, Wales to complete his transfer to a new soccer club. The talented forward was on board a private jet that went completely off the radar somewhere in the English Channel. For a number of weeks, authorities were unable to locate Salah's whereabouts and many searches were shut down. However, the investigation has since come to a conclusion. After searchers covered over 1,700 square miles over the English Channel, a private team eventually located the wreckage of Emiliano Sala's private jet. After a thorough investigation into the contents of the wreckage, it was confirmed that Sala's body was found, bringing a tragic end to a story that shook the world of soccer to its very foundations. Many teams around the world paid tribute to Sala by conducting one-minute silences before the start of their matches. There is no doubt that investigators will continue to look into this bizarre mystery. And who knows, maybe information will soon surface backing up the incident as having actually been factual. Only time will tell. One thing is for sure, though, it is one of the most bizarre mysteries of the 20th century involving a plane. I wouldn't hold my breath for corroborating evidence to be discovered, though. Most investigators have concluded that due to the contradicting evidence surrounding the Pan Am 914 mystery, whatever supposedly happened back in 1992 didn't actually happen. In fact, there are several versions to this same story. One story has the plane taking off from New York in 1955 and landing in Caracas in 1985. 30 years later, not 37. Various stories spread over internet space claim to present the mysterious riddle of Flight 914. Accordingly, a Pan American Flight 914 took off from New York in 1955, vanished, and then the plane landed in Caracas in 1985 after 37 years. So let us examine if the paranormal claims are really true. The alleged plane landing is often shown as a mysterious time travel or time elapse incident, and many people in fact believed in the same. As evidence, 
Related stories mentioned a voice recording between the plane pilot and eyewitnesses, air traffic controller Juan de la Corte being one. The runway calendar of 1955 is also mentioned as a sole proof of the incident. Nonetheless, after a thorough search, there has nothing been found to record any evidence of any Flight 914 vanishing, to be found 37 years later. Over the years, the story in question has been sailing on the internet in various forms. It appeared in May 1985 in the tabloid Weekly World News, refurbished again in later years like in 1993 and in 1999. While many believed it as a true story publication, Weekly World News was largely a fictional and satirical tabloid in the United States from 1979 to 2007. It was known for its characteristic black and white covers. Weekly World News was relaunched in 2009 as an online-only publication. In the tabloid papers, you can see different images of said eyewitness, air traffic controller Juan de la Corte. In the first paper print, you can also see a satirical story titled Mouse Hunter Shoots Himself in the Foot. Coming to the other picture of a flight with passengers standing besides, it actually shows an airline of Spain, Iberia, flying between Madrid and Buenos Aires in 1946. Fans of the science fiction TV series Twilight Zone may have experienced some déjà vu while hearing this story. While the fictional story of Pan Am Flight 914 originated with the tabloid Weekly World News, it's reminiscent of a 1961 episode of the sci-fi show entitled The Odyssey of Flight 33. So, disappointing as it may be to those who love a good mystery, the claims that a Pan American vanished plane landed in Caracas Airport after 37 years are hoaxes that originated from a satirical publication. Or in today's vernacular, fake news. When Weird Darkness returns, it all started one night in June 2018. The screams from underneath the house. Plus, Weirdo family member Ellis Hummerson shares a story passed down the generations about a true ghost sighting in her family. These stories are up next. I have not done a live scream in a while, but I have one on the calendar now. On Saturday, September 28th, I'll be streaming live on my YouTube channel, on camera, telling stories, taking your comments and questions, and I'll even be doing a couple of giveaways during the live show. For this live scream, we'll be talking about liminal people and parallel realities. Liminal people, we know them in a variety of forms shadow people, black-eyed kids, the sleep paralysis figure of the old hag and more, even demons and angels. They may be non-corporeal, but somehow they can cross into our reality and interact with us. That's the subject of our upcoming live stream on Saturday, September 28th on my YouTube channel and on my website on the live stream page. The stream starts at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can watch the show live and send in your comments on my YouTube channel or just watch it on my website by clicking on Live Scream at WeirdDarkness.com. We are way past due for a live scream, so this is going to be fun. I'm live on camera Saturday, September 28th on the Live Scream page at WeirdDarkness.com or you can watch on my YouTube channel where you can also leave comments that I can respond to during the show. Hope to see you Saturday, September 28th. There is a house in a Welsh town at the center of a mystery which has seen its owners fleeing the country in utter terror. So petrified are they about the sounds that they hear underneath their home, they refuse to step foot inside it ever again. The police have been called, but the sound of screaming comes from underneath the basement and it's not been identified. 
but they are convinced there is something going on below the ground. The claims may sound outlandish, like something from a Hollywood horror, but there are recordings that the owners have made inside the property which they say prove the existence of a dark, sinister secret. We'll listen to those recordings in just a moment. It all started one night in June 2018. The owners, Alan and Christine Tate, were up late at the Emmonford house when the latter went to the kitchen to make a coffee. While standing over the kettle, she was convinced that she could hear strange noises and went to inform her husband. Women and children screaming, heavy knocking, men talking in a foreign language. These were just some of the sounds that disturbed the couple to the point where, within weeks, they would leave their home of 11 years and vow not to return. They had no idea where the noises were coming from, but they were coming from somewhere, so they set out to investigate. It was like a flushing noise that I heard first, says Christine from the couple's camper van that they now live in. I told Alan about it and that I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. He left his phone in the bathroom with the recorder on to try and pick up the source of the noise and then we could hear a machine running. We started to record all over the house and we picked up the sounds of chains, a motorbike starting and people screaming. It soon became apparent to Mr. and Mrs. Tate, both 62 years old, that the noises were of a subterranean nature. They appeared to be coming from the kitchen area not directly underneath the kitchen, but underneath the basement that sits below it. Eager to discover more, Mr. Tate dug two 1.5-meter channels into the walls and placed recording equipment inside the shafts that he created. In his own words, the sounds he picked up included a woman screaming, sexual sounds, dogs barking, a printing press running, a motorbike, a car horn honking and what sounds like a police siren. The couple have hundreds of hours of recordings containing different sounds, all of which they claim are coming from underneath their house. Here is a compilation of some of the sounds they've recorded, exactly as they captured it. As you can tell, there is a lot of hiss. I went in and did some noise reduction and some hiss removal, and this is what's left. Some pieces sound unremarkable, but if you listen closely, you definitely can hear human screams in certain sections of the audio.
The ordeal has upset the family so much, they now travel around the UK trying to spread the word about what is going on in Ammonford. Hundreds of people have been in touch with us and agree that this needs to be properly looked at, said Mr. Tate. All I want is an explanation. Why are there people screaming? There must be something going on. We've placed microphones all over the place because we wanted to prove or disprove what we were hearing. Were these noises coming from the main road? Were they coming from a park? We put microphones at the front of the house and the back of the house, inside and out, and in the basement. The device we left in the basement picked up the screaming and other noises. The other devices, which were recording simultaneously at the front and back of the property, picked up nothing at all. Mr. and Mrs. Tate sent Wales Online a key to the house, but advised that if they entered the property, they would do so at their own risk. Despite being in a busy town center, the property lies hidden down a narrow and lonely alleyway. The street is filled with shops and other commercial properties, bar one empty building next door that's up for sale. The front door immediately leads to a staircase which rises to a winged first floor that is split in two. There's a room to the right and a larger, sprawling room to the left. The kitchen sits directly above the now sealed-off basement. There is no direct access to the underground space, other than down a small hole with nine feet of darkness below it. We left our own recording device at the edge of the hole for a number of hours. Meanwhile, neighbors we spoke to were largely unaware of the mystery on their doorstep. The recording we took showed a single spike. Unfortunately, it was us leaving the property. The recordings made by Mr. and Mrs. Tate, however, were carried out inside the walls of the basement rather than above a hole in its ceiling. They are adamant that something is going on. They set up a petition as they try desperately to get the authorities to investigate further. They claim police are ignoring their concerns and that, quote, this matter needs an urgent full investigation, unquote. Local police have confirmed that they've received correspondence from Mr. Tate and that officers attended the area in November of last year. They did not find any evidence of any wrongdoing. Their assertion has not weakened Mr. and Mrs. Tate's firm belief that there are people, men, women, and children, living, sleeping, and working underneath the house. Mrs. Tate believes they are quite a lot of people down there, and the mystery might be connected to people trafficking as well as drug manufacturing. The couple refused to return to Ammonford in fear of what they might find. They even say they are concerned for their own safety. Such is the strength of their conviction that illegal activity is taking place underneath their house they have felt compelled to leave. They're not prepared to say where in the UK they currently reside, and they don't want pictures of themselves published in the press. We're traveling around the country handing out posters and flyers about what we think is going on, said Mr. Tate, defiantly. We want as many people as possible to know about this so that the police are urged to carry out a more thorough investigation. We don't want to go back until the matter has been resolved, he says. I think we're dealing with a serious criminal gang, he continued, and I think our lives could be in danger if they knew where we were. Fact or Fiction the unearthing of a sinister operation or a fanciful horror story. You can make up your own minds. Mr. and Mrs. Tate already have. Our final story comes from weirdo family member Ellis Helmerson, told in her own words. I live in a village in Sweden called Bratfors. The village has a long history of ghost sightings and of sightings of weird creatures. My family has lived in this village for centuries, and many of my friends and family, including myself, have a history of seeing ghosts and weird figures. But I want to share a story that my dad told me when I was younger. The story is a frightening encounter that my great-grandfather told my dad when he was a child. When my great-grandfather was younger, he used to walk between his farm and the main part of the village. The route to the main part of the village was a path that went on for about four miles before you got to the main part of the village. 
on one night my great-grandfather had visited some friends in the main part of the village and was walking home. The only source of light that night was the moon. After walking for about a mile, my great-grandfather saw a man walking in front, and he thought, great, somebody to talk to while I'm walking home. So my great-grandfather started running to get alongside this man so he could talk to him. But when he almost got right beside him, he realized in horror the man had no head. He stopped dead in his tracks and looked in shock at this figure, but the figure didn't notice my great-grandfather and just kept on walking until it disappeared right before my great-grandfather's eyes. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. And please leave a rating and review of the show in the podcast app you listen from. Doing so helps the show to get noticed. You can also email me anytime with your questions or comments through the website at WeirdDarkness.com. That's also where you can find all of my social media, listen to free audiobooks, shop the Weird Darkness store, and more. All stories in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find source links or links to the authors in the show notes. The Mystery of Flight 914 was written by J.J. Foster for Drivepedia.com as well as the Hoax or Fact website and from Snopes.com. Screams from the Basement was written by Robert Harris for Wales Online with captured audio by Alan Tate on YouTube. My Great Grandfather Saw a Headless Ghost was by weirdo family member Ellis Helmerson. Again, you can find links to these stories in the show notes. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marler House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. James 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And a final thought from Walter Hagen you're only here for a short visit. Don't hurry, don't worry, and be sure to smell the flowers along the way. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness.